50 years of solar system exploration has brought us to the very edge of our solar system and back in to the planet closest to our sun, Mercury. Mercury, our closest planet to the sun, is bigger than our moon. You can see Mercury with the, with the naked eye. It's one, of the, it's one of the planets that, of course, has been known since antiquity, but you can't really see a lot of it. Mercury it was a challenge to begin with because of how close it is to the sun and, and uh, the lack of atmosphere and so on. Mariner 10 flew by Mercury, and so we got, we got a look at it for the very first time. It kind of looked like the moon, uh, certainly, certainly no atmosphere, uh, some volatiles apparently that were associated with it. He did discover that he had the magnetic field, which was sort of totally unexpected. And everybody at the time had thought that, well, Mercury is small, it would have cooled off if it had had any sort of a magnetic dynamo, it would have congealed a long time ago, and so the big question uh, that was sort of left by Mariner 10 was with respect to the magnetic field, and it was kind of a, well, who ordered that? You know, flyby missions showed us about half the surface of Mercury with images. We hadn't seen the other side with Mariner 10, so it remained one of the largest pieces of unexplored, unimaged, close-up real estate in the entire solar system. Very fascinating planet. And of course, we wanted to go back and take a look at it. I, I always had a very strong desire to go back there. Well, as we go into as we go further into the 90s, of course, the Discovery Program uh, emerged, and so a group of us in March of 1996 uh, said, "Well, why don't we go to Mercury? <laughs> How hard could that possibly be?" Actually, I think that's what I said, and of course, I've I've learned a lot more since then <laughs> that it can be pretty hard. Well, Messenger, of course, it's the first spacecraft to go into orbit around the planet Mercury. We ended up doing the orbit insertion burn of, in March of 2011, and we have been operating there since then. And it has just been a phenomenal success. We have been able to show that not only is there a magnetic dynamo there, but there's still a largely liquid core. There's an enormous amount of preserved volcanism. And what the volcanism tells you is a lot about the history of the interior of the planet. We've got images covering the entire planet, topographic data, geochemical data. You know, we're still left with lots of questions. Mercury is still a fairly mysterious planet. And in fact, we now believe there's ices, including water, that's trapped in permanently shadowed craters in the north and south hemisphere at the poles. Again, though, we apply what we know about the Earth, we know what we know about the moon, how we think planets work, and apply it to this really enigmatic place and try to tell, again, a story that is not only compelling but makes you know, scientific sense. It has been, I think, an incredible tour de force of actually going out to some place that we've only seen the first glimpse of and really been able to... Uh, we haven't rewritten the textbook yet, that's going to be coming up here in the next year or two, but we are going to be rewriting all the textbooks on Mercury.